So in end of August here, uh, PF Sense reached 2.4 release candidate. I know it's September, I've been a little busy, so I'm finally getting around to review the release candidate and the latest iteration. So I just downloaded it uh, this the afternoon. And so what is it? Today is uh, September 14th. So it's the latest iteration as of September 14th. I don't have a. I don't know exactly when they're going to go full release, but uh, this is fairly comprehensive as to what it should look like in the end. Once it does go to full release, I'm going to do a full review. A couple highlights of the new version 2.4 is a new PFSense installer, and that's cool. It does support ZFS in UFI, which I kind of like that. Uh, the ZFS is particularly because you can set up uh, full ZFS support, and I'll show you that when we get to the installer part. Uh, support for NetGate ARM, NetGate ARM devices, the SG1000 and SG3100. I've reviewed the SG-1000. Um, I've actually put it in a small client with only a few computers, and it works really good. I've actually not had a problem with that. I probably want to do a follow-up video when I get a chance on it, and uh, eventually I might order one of these SG-3100s and take a look at them. I like the ARM devices. They're low wattage, and they seem to work really well. They moved to the uh, latest Open, Open VPN 2.4 stream, which is great. Uh, VPNs are really, really important and more popular than ever. We install a lot of them for our clients. It's one of the reasons I like PFSense because they have a very simple way to deploy VPNs on Windows boxes uh, for people that want to remotely access their network. Uh, more languages, that's cool. Um, web GUI improvements, such as a new login page. Yeah, we'll show you that too. The login page, definitely new. Uh, new certificate manager, upgraded wireless stack. I've not done a lot of videos on how the whole wireless stack works uh, in PSSense, but it's pretty neat. You can attach directly US, uh, wireless devices to it, but we usually recommend you know an external access point. That's We don't use it a lot. Uh, they are deprecating 32-bit and nano BSD versions. So those ones are going to be deprecated and no more support for that. So let's go right in and take a look at the installer and talk about what's new. So you're familiar when you boot the CD, it looks pretty much the same as it did before. I got it in my virtual machine here. We'll go ahead and run through the installer. Most of it looks the same, but they've just basically added some more menus because it's a newer version. So you still have your install and rescue. Ignore the error message at uh, 12 ports removal. It doesn't do that in regular hardware when I was testing. It only does this in my virtual machine. Continue with default May key map. Uh, auto manual shell. Uh, auto ZFS, guided route on ZFS. So I thought this was kind of cool. So you choose the ZFS here. And you can choose the disk, the type, uh, pool name, Force 4K, whether or not you want encryption. I like this too. Uh, good and bad is every time you reboot PFSense, you're going to have to type in the disk uh, password on there because it is full uh, encryption. It does have the option to encrypt the swap as well. We're not going to do any uh, disk encryption. Well, I guess we could do encrypt to show you what it works. Then we go back up here. Uh, pool type, stripe, mirror, raid. RAID Z3. Yes, you can build your uh, PFSense on a RAID Z3 triple redundant. I think that's pretty slick. So may, a lot of people may just go for mirroring on it, but um, definitely cool. That's I like the way that they have full ZFS uh, in here. Select the drive and uh, proceed with the install. Are you sure you want to destroy 8080? Yep. We got to put the password in for the ZFS encryption. I chose something simple because this is just a virtual machine. I like this too. At the end, the installation is now finished. Before exiting the installer, would you like to open a shell and make any final manual modifications? So if you're doing some real custom stuff, they give you an option right here during the installer to add your custom things. We're going to go ahead and reboot and go right into PFSense. Now, because we put a password on this disk, the first thing it asks you as soon as you boot up is, it needs a password to decrypt the disk. So we'll go ahead and throw the password in. It decrypts and then goes into the normal boot settings that you're used to. And here's our regular menu. Now here's the new sign-in page and still the default is admin and pfSense and a fresh install. And we can then run through the configuration, which pretty much looks the same. I, nothing big here, I like the little steps to a nine so that it looks a little better, pfSense. View box test.
Now I turned off the Block Bogon networks because uh, this is double natted. This is my little lab that I've got set up. So if I blocked uh, certain networks, I wouldn't be able to do certain things on there. And we reload and it'll bring us back into the regular PFSense. So the menus look pretty much the same here. Uh, it's not substantially different except for this right here, NetGate services and support, community support only. You can register your support description, upgrade your support. So they've made it a little bit easier if you have a support contract with them to put it all right in here and have that you know really one click available on there and you don't have to keep this menu you can just go i don't want it and then the menus are still right in here right here's the netgate service port firewall logs dynamic system information a lot of these seem pretty much the same nothing substantial there Cert Manager pretty much looks the same. I, like I said, I'll go in depth once they have the full version released. That way I don't have anything that's bad information here. But uh, for the most part, the package management, uh, all the features really look very much like PFSense, except for you know a little bit of a logo change. And uh, the interface seems a little bit faster. Uh, having you know me load the same machine with uh, PFSense several times because it's my virtual box, it it seems like a little bit snappier the way the interface drop downs are, uh, but until I really get into it, I'm not gonna know. It's one of those, it's really hard to tell. It was so fast before, it's not like this was really a problem, but uh, most everything's in the same familiar place and I can't, nothing substantial, so there's no big learning curve to do this. I am excited for once they do final release. I've been playing around with this and walking through all the VPN stuff and everything else. And uh, nothing, like I said, nothing substantially different than previous. Like I said, all these menus look the same, but they've added more things to it. So they've added more options, more algorithms. Uh, this was actually uh, ported in as well in the old versions, the use of a TLS key. So you can have a predefined TLS key prior to, uh, then you've got C layer two, layer two tap mode. Most of this is all the same uh, as it was in the previous versions. So nothing, and the outside appears dramatically different, but it's mostly under the hood where they changed a lot of things. But uh, hopefully I have that full review done as soon as I find out when the release date is for this. But I wanna give you guys an overview and show you with the new PFSense 2.4, just kind of give a quick look at it and the installer. The big things are that ZFS support, which is awesome, especially because if you really are mission critical, you're gonna wanna put this on a uh, solid, either a RAID set or however you wanna st uh, stack it at minimum a mirror and gives you much more availability based on that, uh, supports the disk encryption, pretty nice if that's uh, something important to you. That way if anyone ever took your box, they wouldn't have your VPN keys and everything that were in the box, uh, which is, you know, a nice feature. I don't know how absolutely necessary it is from a security standpoint, because if they walk off of your VPN and get the keys, then they have their VPN and you'll reload a new one and reload your keys at that point. So, but uh, they do have it now, it is on there. I do like the way they give you a NetGate uh, device ID and assign there, that way when you set up your support contract, if you need support from them, uh, you have some unique identifiers. I know they're working more into the support services on there and uh, being helpful with that. And I'll do a review, like I said, once it's released. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like the content here, like and subscribe.